the home. Ah, hi. <clears throat> Thanks to, thank you all for coming. It's so great to, to finally meet all of you in person. So our talk is about releasing NixOS and get you motivated to help out in the release process um, because it's a very hard task and we need more volunteers. And in the end, we have some statistics that uh, Robin prepared um, that gonna blow your mind. So let's start with the boring stuff. Um, one year of NixOS. So um, the first release, uh, 1703 in this year, codenamed Gorilla, was released by Robin. Um, it had uh, a few cool features, uh, which is Nix packages overlay done by NBP and the SetUID wrappers. We had uh, around 80 new service modules and of course lots of bug fixes. Um, the current release 1709 Hummingbird. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have very new exciting features in this release, but we had uh, lots of cleanups and lots of updates which you can read, read in the release notes. Um, so, like PostgreSQL stuff and MySQL stuff moving around uh, that you have to do manually, and around 17 new service modules. So, these were our last releases. Um, now, to release managers. Uh, a few months ago, um, we started an RFC. If you haven't seen it, there's an RFCs repo that where Simbad, Simbad started, awesome, um, where we can, like, shape the community and the processes around uh, NixOS and the Nix ecosystem. Um, we have created an RFC for release managers because we have the we had problem that we had like for years only one release manager uh, domain. Um, uh, so he couldn't really do it anymore because it was so much work and he asked Robin to do it. Um, but it wasn't a very sustainable um, process to do. Um, so we propose that there are now two people involved um, in the release process, one old release manager and one new release manager. So one coming from the uh, previous release and one new release manager that is appointed by the two release managers before him. So this is the new process that also was approved um, and we'd like to continue with that. Um, we hope that we can um, in that way, um, spread the knowledge uh, how to release NixOS. There's even some documentation that we continuously try to update. Um, and yeah, it should right now be uh, documented enough so you can, um, so you know what you are actually doing. So what are the duties of a release manager? The uh, important thing is to pick goals and issues to fix in the next release. This is very difficult because we have lots of issues, we have lots of bugs, and it's very difficult to prioritize them. Um, also, uh, in uh, each release we have some blockers, like issues we have to fix before the release. Um, actually, for this release we had some really weird blockers, like the uh, QEMU interface, renaming stuff. Um, that's due to a kernel uh, config option chains. And it was very difficult to, to decide on the right solution. Like, right now we decided to uh, put it in the release notes and make you aware of it, but we could also have done some automatic uh, uh, fixing, but that would, be, would have been a little bit weird um, because uh, some semantics would have changed. So this is actually more difficult than it looks. Um, the other thing is there are lots of PRs and new features hanging around um, that are not uh, merged yet. Um, so you have to like nudge the people to like get their stuff ready and also review it. That's a very diffi difficult task. Like for this release, we planned like to have the cross compilation feature in and we and John Erickson actually worked very hard on this. Um, but in the end, we weren't able to deliver it, unfortunately, but for the next release. Um, the other thing is to write the release notes. So we, you have to go through all the commits, all the history happening since the last release um, to find out what has changed, to find out um, what are breaking changes um, that you have to document for the users. Also updating the website, uh, but that's actually really easy. And uh, what's the most annoying task 
is to watch Hydra for uh, failing builds and failing NixOS tests. We have some weird um, failures in NixOS tests, some transient bugs in QEMU, probably re related to I.O. I'm not sure, but um, a lot of times uh, NixOS tests fail, and when you restart them, they won't fail. So, one of the main tasks I was doing to watch Hydra hit refresh, oh, it failed again, restart it. Yeah, <laughs> great. Um, so somebody should eventually fix that, but I don't feel qualified. <laughs> the other thing is, um, like, uh, after the branch off and after the release, you have to monitor master for uh, bug fixes coming in and uh, backport them to the release branch. It's also very time consuming because we have a lot of code coming in. A lot of code. We'll see, we'll see later. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is the the most interesting and most uh, fun task, you can pick the code name for the next release. So not the release that you are releasing, but the next release, because after the branch off, uh, the code name has to be set in the new, uh, in the next package's uh, master. So yep. actually the second release you are releasing, you get to choose the code name. Yeah, when you are the, the new release manager, yeah. So that's a fun task. Um, okay. So, what were the release managers? The first release was 1310, if I read correctly, uh, and was released by Elko. Um, the one after that, too. And then Domen did his release run, four releases in a row. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Also Elko, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I think she Levy also did some of the releases here, actually. Sorry? Oh. Ah, I, I looked at the uh, release mail, so... Yeah, I don't know which one, but I think I didn't record it. Oh, no. Some of my credit is due to... To Levy, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then with 1709, we started uh, with two release managers with the new RFC. So the next release, 1803, will be called Impala. Um, the fun thing about Impala, it's some kind of antelope, uh, which is in the same family as GNUs. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why we picked it. And we have a new release manager. It's Vladimir Kunat. <laughs> yeah. You might have seen him on GitHub. Might have seen him on GitHub. He's always fixing stuff. Always doing lots of commits. Uh, really awesome that we have him. That he now is the official next release manager. Okay, and let's look at the future. Nixos 1809. Needs a release manager. If you're up for the job, please come talk to us. Uh, when we release 1803, we have to pick a new release manager, uh, and it might be you. So <laughs> please do it. We, we don't want to do it uh, after that because it's pretty much work and so stressful. But but but, but, it, but it is nice work. It too. is nice work. Yeah. You. That, that, it, it's, you can it, give talks and stuff, <laughs> yeah. It, it sounds much worse than it is, actually. <laughs> I told you what you have to do, so you can decide. <laughs> okay, now we have some t uh, future ideas for features um, that we would like to have because, hey, we want to take over the world, right? <laughs> we have to fight the the like the docker issue somehow so uh, my my idea would be to like uh, be the standard tool for building docker images so what we would like <laughs> <laughs> so we would li very much like to have a service abstraction layer uh, copumpkin also did some work on that but i would very much like to see it in 1803 um the other thing what would be cool is a container backend for NixOS tests, because, yeah, 
a bit biased because I have restarted so much NixOS tests, uh, but like some tests could be run in, um, in a container instead of a KVM environment because uh, when you only test on a normal service, it can just be run in a container. When you're testing like the installer and the bootloader, it has to be done in KVM, of course. Um, the other thing is the system D service hardening. System D has lots of hardening features. We should enable by default. Um, the other thing is Nix or Nix OS user environments. Uh, there's a pull request open for like three years. You should get that ready. Yeah, Thomas Strobel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Let's talk about that. The other thing is uh, web service abstraction. So we have like lots of web services opening ports, uh, opening like fast CGI sockets or SCGI sockets or whatever, and we would like to abstract over that and like um, um, glue together a web server and a web app more easily, or a virtual host and a web server and a web app more easily. So you don't have to like remember um, paths or, or exp a specific, uh, specified paths or port numbers. And we would like to have a new PR testing bot. Graham is working on that, and I hope we will have that soon ready. Maybe after the hackathon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now to the interesting stuff. Globin has made some statistics. Well, um, yeah, I've collected some statistics on commits, issues, and pull requests. Um, I have a lot of data and like used a quarter of it probably for the slides now. Um, and I'll just go ahead and start with the most obvious stuff, commits per year. You can see um, around 2014, 2015 and 2016, we've had more than 15,000 commits. Um, last year it was about 17,000. Uh, this year we'll probably reach about the same. And like the interesting stuff in there is the per percentage of change compared to the year before. We can see in 2012 uh, we had a really high rate of change again. Uh, does anyone know what happened in that year? Like, don't we? That, that was the year when uh, Next Package's development moved to GitHub and a lot of uh, new contributors started contributing. You can also see that here. That's the number of committers, uh, which is grown really enormously. Last year we had uh, around 800. This year already, I think, nearly 900. And we still have a few months left. So that will grow even more. And again, in 2012, there was a really, really big change. Um, that's Another quite nice statistic, you can see around like 2008 to 2011 there were not that many people but doing a lot of work and you can see how uh, due to there being much more like drive-by contributors um, the rate of commits per committer has uh, been less but that's only. That's actually a good sign that uh, people can contribute quite easily. That's uh, the number of commits per day. Uh, it like normally is around 40 to 70 commits a day, which is quite a lot. And what you can actually see quite good if you zoom in, um, the red lines are the releases. <laughs> And like uh, around uh, at least the last three releases, uh, people suddenly remembered they should commit and submit their stuff, <laughs> and which is actually 
quite uh, yeah it, it's not that nice for the release managers because <laughs> there's a lot of change right before the release <laughs> and that's uh, the same graph as the one before number of commits per day <laughs> That that happens too, but <laughs> uh, but but we 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 see the pull requests too later. But um, actually, it's a lot of uh, people remembering that they should actually get their stuff merged. <laughs> yes, probably yes. But um, yeah, I'd like to encourage you to uh, like. Commit your stuff in between two, um, <laughs> so so that it uh, makes it easier uh, to release the stuff. Then to issues. That's yeah. That we can see uh, the GitHub history started in 2012. Um, we have had. Two, alone in 2016, 2,500 issues were created. That is a hell of a lot. And that actually, I, I'm not sure if many other GitHub projects have like those numbers. We're probably one of the GitHub projects using the issue tracker most. And yeah. There again, please, like, other, uh, people, like, not, not even being able to commit, uh, we'd like to encourage you to, like, uh, go through issues, um, try them, and have a look, because we have quite a lot of open issues, too, um, where probably a lot of them aren't really issues anymore, but there are just so many that we have difficulties to cope with all of them. Um, here are numbers of issues opened by different users. <laughs> just... <coughs> <laughs> I say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> then numbers of issues by assignee. <laughs> that might be a reason for the next release manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, PT has to be careful too. <laughs> um, here's uh, some statistics about how long it takes. Uh, to fix issues or to close issues actually it doesn't have to be fixing them as you can <laughs> see with the eight second issue which is quite nice probably someone I, I think uh, he closed it himself um, but but we can actually see like 50% of the, the issues are closed um, in seven days which is not bad Actually, a fun fact, the maximum, the 1,700 days, was an issue uh, crea created by Elko in 2012 that the MySQL closure size was too big. Oh. <laughs> and was closed, I think, half a year ago now. And yes, some uh, the comments too, um, like, the maximum 156 comments on one issue. That's quite a lot. Um, yeah, that's the same statistic as the uh, one we had with the commits for issues open per day. Uh, we can actually see a large peak in there. That was when the last wiki was shut down. Those are the issues to move the wiki. Uh, and what we can actually see is that we 
don't have that much correlation with releases in the issues, which is quite nice because that like tells us the release uh, the, the releases didn't break too much. Ah, um, that's the issues closed per day. We like generally generally close five issues a day. That is quite a n high number too. And actually, like for 1703, we can actually probably see that a lot of people noticed, oh, I've broken some stuff uh, and like fixed it a month before the release. That's uh, issues open versus closed per day. Um, yeah, we can actually see that we hardly ever go below zero, which means we're actually like collecting issues every day. We should try and fix that. Uh, now, pull requests. You can see last year we had 7,000 pull requests. This year too, I think that is the data from around five days ago. So we actually might have uh, might have as many pull requests opened as in 2016 now already. Um, here we have number of pull requests by user. Nequisimus is uh, leading that statistic. And yeah. Ah, I actually, mm, I, wa I wanted to change that to uh, numbers of P PRs by m merger, but I think I forgot that one. No. I'll, uh, I know, <laughs> I, I have it there. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting statistic. That, that one is, uh, the, I, w I wanted to drop the other slide actually. Yeah, we can see uh, MIG-92 is in front of probably everyone will have noticed <laughs> because it's an insane number of pull requests he's merging. Uh, Joachim with Python stuff and the rest. And then Domin isn't that far back too. And Jagger Jagger. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sadly he isn't... <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. You should do more again. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Still yeah, still obviously. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, here actually, again, some data on the comments and review comments and the merge duration. Oh, I, I actually, that is merging and closing. Oh, what is it? No, I think I think that is really only pull requests that are merged. I don't know who managed to do that in two seconds. <laughs> I have I have to look which one that was. That that looks interesting. Uh, but yeah, seventy-five percent of the pull requests are merged in two and a half days, which is really nice. Then, the last few statistics. Hmm? <laughs> I'm not sure. You can look it up. Yeah. But, yeah, numbers of pull requests created per day, that's what I said earlier too. It's not only like pull requests being merged right before the release, but also pull requests being created right before the release. And it's like 30 a day. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have, yeah, uh, pull requests open versus merged. 
you can see that the last two months were actually like the worst we had since uh, development merged, uh, moved to GitHub. Um, there are like around two and a half pull requests being opened and not merged a day currently. So please review stuff, help the people merging uh, so that we can get more stuff merged. I think we're around 550 open pull requests now. And I can remember times where we were keeping it below 200, yeah. 250. That is, has grown insanely in the last few months. Yeah, that was the data I had, um, or the, the data I managed to look through. Um, the statistics and slides are on GitHub with Git LFS, and GitHub actually rate limits you quite hard. That's why it might not be possible to clone all the data from GitHub. That's why we have mir mirrored it on our GitLab. Um, so if GitHub doesn't work, please just use uh, the GitLab. Um, I'm currently building the whole statistics and the slides on our Hydra. Um, the slides sadly don't render properly directly on Hydra, but if you um, just next door realize and uh, run the browser from the result, you'll be fine. And we definitely need more statistics. Um, if you have any ideas for more statistics, just open an issue or implement it yourself. Everything is, uh, the, the slides you saw are just Jupyter notebooks, um, rendered as slides. There is a, a whole more of data you can look through. Uh, it's all in the repository um, and was generated with Git Pandas and Python GitHub backup. But uh, actually with some patching and hacking around, so uh, I'll, I've opened pull requests for Git Pandas, but apparently broke some tests I didn't manage to fix yet. And the Python GitHub Backup actually doesn't give you that much data uh, regarding, for example, who merged the pull request by default. And I hacked around in there and didn't have the time to submit all that upstream. And I'll do that in the next few days and probably uh, add, or I'll definitely add uh, the how to gather the, the data to the readme then. That's all I have to say. So, are there any questions? Um, just, uh, I'm going to oh, pass the uh, microphone okay. around. Yeah. So, if you have any questions. No questions. Okay. Everyone asleep. <laughs> we said it all. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so, uh, does the URL the statistic only in uh, the Nix packages repo or uh, on all the repos in the Nix OS organization? That was only Nix packages. I didn't have enough time to do more. Yeah, well, th that will get us a, bit, a better view on the sets of Hydra, Nix, and yep. Nixos, yeah. Yeah, that, that is stuff like you could pull requests and or yeah. open issues. That that is like the interesting stuff we need. Yeah, thanks. From the shy. Any ideas for more statistics? <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> 
probably quite simple uh, just to graph the backlog of open issues and uh, unmerged pull requests. This would be really yep. helpful, mm -hmm. I think. How useful are the tags that we put on the issues and pull requests for releases? It depends. Um, so uh, we are only watching a, a few labels. Um, like the blocker label is very important for us, also the mass rebuild label and the security label. Um, but for the most part, like the package update label or package new label is mostly useless, unfortunately. Um, we should reorganize them at some point, but I don't have really good ideas right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do you have any ideas? Mm, not ideas? really. <laughs> yeah. That's a microphone. I was oh. told. <laughs> Hello, Aaron. Uh, as, as managers and maintainers, can you say what, uh, what's your view on the GitHub feature uh, squash and merge? Basically, when oh. I do pull request, I do some fixes, like ma uh, maintainer request fixes from me. And uh, then, I, I, uh, myself, I, do, uh, yeah, I don't see the point when uh, maintainer writes to me, please squash. Mm -hmm. Time passes, I see the message, yeah. uh, oh, I am not on the same laptop or something, and I, I need to, I squash it and commit it back, and manager the, then sees it, and then maybe he requests some other changes. But uh, um, when, when maintainer can, he looks at the code, maintainer understands what it does, it may, it, uh, he, he squashes it and measures it. I, th I think it depends on the pull request. Uh, if it's like only small package updates, it normally is uh, fine to just use the uh, squash and merge button, but we, we often have like pull requests updating the package and the module. And those are like two logical commits I don't want to have squashed. Uh, what I sometimes do is simply uh, push on the uh, like uh, pull requesters uh, branch and squash things myself, and then no merge normally. Um, but yeah, um, normally it should be fine to just use squash and merge, but sometimes you uh, want to keep commit separate. For sim for simple pull requests, squash and merge. Is yeah. Great. Yeah. Hmm. I, um, so so what's the uh, as a release maintainer? What's the single biggest task which is taking up uh, relatively much time? <laughs> um, it's a mixture of monitoring Hydra and um, watching master. Like we we actually um, had a branch which was like tracking master where we always pushed the commit to that branch of uh, the commit of master to that branch uh, up to the point we had reviewed to like keep track um, where we stopped reviewing the last time. Um, Last time I didn't do that, but there, there was me alone watching uh, Master, and I think we had a few less commits that release compared to this one, and this one was like maybe half an hour a day going through commits. So watching Master is hard because like you have to if, if the branch of already happened, you have to backport um, the commits and like test it, of course. And, and in the first few weeks, it, it's easy, but it's becoming more and more difficult the more time uh, goes on. So right now, we get the first conflict, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to backport even more. That's okay. And uh, actually, in another uh, thing we do a lot is like pinging people on different issues like every 
Haskell issue pity gets pinged, for example, <laughs> because we know he he knows what's wrong and we know he'll fix it. Can you imagine any tools to help distribute <coughs> the work among many people? Or do you think it's inherently a process that requires one person to take that point? Um, definitely the pull request testing would help a lot. Because we then don't like have to run Nox review for every pull request we want to merge. Or, yeah, like, uh, what would be nice if we could like have job sets for, and I don't know, a bunch of 15 pull requests merged together and just like test all of the rebuilds that w would cause because uh, there are quite a lot of pull requests like only uh, changing 20, 30, 40 builds and like rebasing them on top of each other and creating a job set automatically for that would probably uh, make it a lot easier. Also, I'm from time to time not sure as GitHub, if GitHub is really the right tool for us. Uh, but don't get me wrong, GitHub is great, but it's not easily customizable because it's closed source. Well, but we, we've profited a lot from GitHub, of course. We've got a lot of new committers from GitHub, so I'm not sure where we, where we go from here. Any questions? Yeah, uh, well, more of a note for the backporting of mm -hmm. uh, to stable branches. I, I would prefer, not just because I will be a release manager, <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, uh, I think uh, already when uh, people create pull requests or merge them, they should think whether that change is suitable for backporting. And I would like uh, them to do the work because they update the package. Often they are maintainers and they know more about it yeah. than uh, the release manager who well can just know everything or, or all yep. the packages yeah, so so uh, i would prefer to shift that to to those uh, to to maintainers of the packages and those who update <coughs> them totally yep. totally and uh, so. another thing there is uh people we, we'd like to encourage all of you to uh, actually write release notes yeah, be, be, because I spent like two days going through the whole NixOS folder diff, <laughs> uh, trying to figure out the breaking changes in there, which I think worked out quite well. But I don't think we should do that like that. But really, be more strict on uh, letting people add release notes. Yeah. Uh, also, the, the, the package managers really should do their job because I had a few commits uh, for this release and after that release they were actually fixing security issues but were not tagged as such and were not backported. So the one who merges the pull request has to backport it if it's relevant for, for stable. Because like, as, if, as we've said, tracking master is hard. Reading all the commits is really hard. It's a very time consuming job. Oh, so oh, everyone could help out there. Everyone oh, who can merge. Or at least and Ping, Graham, Franz, Domen, Rob, me. People yeah. people who <laughs> or, or ping us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. people who, who regularly backport stuff. If, if it's I don't know, too much work or too complicated or I don't know, but at least ping us because we'll happily do security backporting obviously <laughs> um, and that is really important that we notice security yeah. issues because going through all the change logs of minor package uh, uh, bumps is uh, <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> but I think Graham will say a bit more yeah. on that later yep right uh, 
So first off, while you did a marvelous job at uh, making the uh, job of a release manager like a really intriguing aspect, and I'm, I'm like thrilled to do that, or maybe not. <laughs> um, I wonder, I wonder act actually if, if maybe it shouldn't be a release manager, but a release manager's team, yep. which would be like way less scary because, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, I mean, to me, it seems like a scary aspect. And in the end, of course, one person has to be bold enough to say, bam, let's merge. But uh, yeah, I mean, having a release team, maybe that would be... That yeah, that, that, that is actually what we started to do with the RFC. So uh, we now always have two release managers for a release. And the cool thing about this, we have previous release managers who know, uh, uh, who already have done it, and always can jump in and help out. Okay. Yeah. So and, yeah. and as like, as like, like uh, 1703 Domin helped me a lot uh, with releasing. It, it's a bit unfair to say that I was <laughs> the release manager of 1703 and then the two of us for 1709 because Domin actually like did quite a lot for 1703 too. Okay, and as so, sort of a follow up question, one thing that I've been wondering about is, and I would, would like to get your thoughts on that. Is like this this trade of of uh, how many people get merged access. So on the one hand, you can say it's a bottleneck, right? On the other hand, if you, I mean, we we we've, we've seen the spikes anyway. But on the other hand, uh, it's like if we give more, if you give merge access to too many people, then maybe too much stuff is getting merged. Maybe already stuff is getting merged. But I sometimes wonder, like, mm, should that have been merged at this point? So I wonder, what you think about the the trade offs of, of that? Like, how many people can merge? How many should merge? Should, should there be some extra tooling to limit the things of merging and uh, the, 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 the parts that can be merged by individuals and, and stuff like that? So, um, yeah, um, my opinion on that, uh, eventually I would uh, like uh, that, no, that nobody has push access to master anymore. Everything has to go... <laughs> <laughs> So I, I've pushed to master a lot, and a lot of you have fixed uh, after me, so thank you. <laughs> but um, the thing is, um, pushing to master is nice to, to get stuff out really quickly, but we have to have review. And we should have more people being able to merge, of course, um, but uh, committing directly to master is dangerous, as we've seen in the past. So I think we should adopt it at some point, but first we have to get the tooling right. Yeah. It has to be um, more reliable than Travis CI. That, I mean, Graham has done some work on that. Um, you mean Graham Do of Borg? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Domin and I started building stuff uh, to make uh, testing pull requests on Hydra possible, but haven't finished that. And I'll definitely have a chat with Graham on how to improve or merge our ideas and implementations and try and get that started as soon as possible. But yeah, I was delayed by being a release manager um, and didn't get as much code out as I wanted. And now like gathering the statistics took me the last two or three weeks. Um, but yeah, that is definitely something we, we will and have to improve on. Um, For uh, backporting, um, mm -hmm. so should people that are um, creating pull requests, should they create a separate pull request? for the same issue to backport the issue to make it easier for you guys? Or what would be the best way to handle that if you don't have uh, commit access to cherry pick it in? Uh, that would be great. Um, but if you open a pull request, you should also test it. And that's <laughs> the difficult one. Because like when you ask me to backport it, of course I will backport it. But I'm, I'm not sure when I will get to it. Because I, I have to test, uh, I have to check if, it, if everything still works. And that's difficult. But there are some improvements in that area because I think like Prof. Patch is working on Nix packages tests and there's uh, some more stuff with the Nixos tests going on. So yeah, we have to improve on that. Um, to, uh, and also when we have automated uh, testing, uh, this will also go away. So right now you can open pull requests, um, but please ping 
uh, at least some of the release managers are bloated. Um, but yeah, back, backporting is also, like cherry picking is also possible. And try to get the cherry pick right. Cherry pick dash X. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, yeah. To you were speaking about stats. Do we have stats about the number of commits which were made without a pull request? Which means, sorry? Do we have stats about the number of commits made without a pull request? Oh, no. We don't have currently, but that is something we should do. Mm -hmm. All right. It shouldn't Thanks be too hard, I think. Lubin.